Okay, this always works on Instagram, so here we go. Here goes nothing. Oh my god! <laughs> it worked! I never believe Instagram stories, but I mean, it's here! It's finally here! Ladies and gentlemen, it's finally here. My recently acquired 2015 Porsche Cayman S with a manual transmission. After months and months of searching and months and months of speculation from a lot of you that I'll be getting a Porsche, I finally pulled the trigger. And now, before you jump to conclusion, no, I am not getting rid of my F80 BMW M3. That one stays. This is becoming an addition to the fleet. And I am super, super excited that I found this car and today I'm gonna to tell you all about it. I bought this vehicle from a dealer out in Ohio and after going back and forth a couple of times, we agreed on the price and I purchased it and the car was shipped to me. Now, my actual vehicle delivery experience uh, was quite traumatizing and I wanna play a little segment that I put together for you in case this ever happens to you. This is it. It arrived on a trailer like this. Scraping. You're good, you're good, you're good, you're good. You're good. Perfect. Yeah, you've done this before. There we go. She's not that low yet. This is a lot lower than I expected. Yes, the clutch is heavy. The clutch is heavy. I love it. It's the first raw experience. So you will get to experience this with me. It's, it's really cold outside. It's 27 degrees outside and we're running on uh, summer tires. Uh, <laughs> so, it's, so we're not gonna push the car tonight. We're just, we're just gonna experience it and put it away because tomorrow we're getting a major, major snowstorm. Imagine I stall it on the first. Oh. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. What is going on? I don't know if it's the low pressure, but I feel some skipping. What is that? Huh. We have a problem. So I have no idea what's happening. When I turn the wheels, the car skips. I mean, I, I am gonna have to take the wheel off and, and see what's going on. What the heck could it be? I hope it's a wheel that's loose. Luckily, we're close to home. Let's see. When you turn, it's fine now. It's weird. I mean, there's no, there's no shaking or anything. But as it turns out, when I got home and took the wheel off and started inspecting everything, there was really nothing wrong that I could visually see. Then I started Googling uh, the issue and I found out that apparently mid-engine and rear-engine vehicles experience this issue during cold weather and especially when you have high performance summer tires installed in the vehicle. Essentially, since there's not much weight over the front tires and the tires are skinny, uh, when you turn the wheels and the, with the wheel geometry, the outside or the outside wheel has a full contact patch where the inside wheel uh, has only a, a fraction of a, of a contact patch. And because of the fact that the car has limited slip, it pushes forward and the car doesn't have enough grip to turn. So instead of turning, it kind of goes forward, but it's skipping a little bit it's 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 minuscule but it's noticeable and it it's it, it makes an audible sound and it completely freaked me out but it turns out it's not an issue so if you take delivery of a mid-engine or rear-engine vehicle and experience this thing in extremely cold weather on summer tires that's it and there's nothing nothing to uh, to be worried about and not knowing this completely completely ruined my delivery experience and another thing, if I'm being honest, when I pulled the car into the garage, not only was I concerned about the front, 
but I also smelled a bit of a rubbery substance. As it turns out, it's also a common issue with a Cayman or any rear engine car with engine exposed from the bottom. Apparently when you pick up uh, road debris, uh, those uh, the, the little rubber chunks melt and, 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 and can uh, give off uh, a pretty bad smell for uh, a few seconds or minutes after you shut off the car leaving it in the garage. So that smell was also normal and that smell completely freaked me out and that smell once again turned out to be completely normal with this car. And if I'm being completely honest, there were two other issues that were dealer related uh, and I'm going to go into those issues in my follow up video. I, I don't want to go into them just yet. Today I want to focus on me showing you the vehicle. We're going to take a look outside inside. I'm going to tell you all about it. I'm going to tell you why I got this specific vehicle and tell you what's planned for the future. Now that we got that out of the way, let's take a look at the car. Let's walk around it first. So this is a pretty stripped out Cayman S. Uh, the only few options that it has, it's got the 20 inch Carrera wheels and a convenience package and a couple of goodies uh, inside that I'm going to talk to you. Uh, it does not have sports suspension, but I already have upgraded suspension on order. So we're going to be doing a DIY video on that. Uh, as you can see from the back, it looks very, very mean. It does not have a sport exhaust, uh, but we're going to be tackling that as well. So uh, uh, don't you worry and stay tuned for that. As you can tell, it's already been branded with my decal. And uh, if I'm doing a walkthrough, might as well open the rear hatch. And to do it, you have this little key and the key is shaped like a Porsche, which is kind of cool. So you click on it and it opens up the hatch area. In the hatch area, you've got this little flop which covers what's, uh, what's inside. Uh, here, this is your shelf. But under that shelf, uh, you have an aluminum cover. Under the aluminum cover, you have uh, the actual engine or the top of the engine uh, that you can see. Uh, you've got this aluminum looking piece. And in case you are curious, this is your oil filler and your coolant is on the other side. Uh, this is your trunk. It's fairly deep, as you can tell. And uh, what's in this trunk? Well, look at that. Ooh, would it be intakes? Oh, I guess we're going to be doing intakes as well. And uh, let's close this. So coming on this side, again, walking around. Nothing really to see here. Uh, the brakes look fine. Uh, they have plenty of life left. The front pads look a little bit low, so we might be tackling those as well. Uh, first thing, actually, we're going to be buying track pads and we're going to be bleeding the whole system. Uh, so there's going to be a DIY on that as well. Uh, the car uh, looks very, very dirty only because it's been delivered on a trailer. Uh, the dealer actually washed it on the outside when they, uh, when they dropped it off. Uh, but because of the fact that the car was delivered during a snowstorm, uh, that's why it looks like this. And uh, now uh, the front plate, as you could tell, yes, it's an attached front plate. One of the videos I'm going to show you is how to remove it and patch the holes so you won't see it because even though I'm in New Jersey, I like to run without a front plate. And again, if you press the little front button here, that should open up the front trunk. There's a little latch here that you flick and it opens up a pretty deep frunk, if you will. It, it's very, very spacious. I've got to say it goes almost all the way to the floor and under these plastic panels, which I'll obviously be removing during the, my ownership of this vehicle. There's a bunch of components. There's a battery in there, your, um, your brake booster and your uh, brake fluid reservoir and, and all that other stuff. Um, so yeah, and look, one cool thing about this car, a lot of vehicles that you buy are not clear coated on the inside. This one, I guess Porsche finishes their vehicles on the inside. So that's a nice little touch. And uh, the car has uh, Xenon headlights and LED daytime running lights slash fog lights. As you can say, see the radiators look very, very clean. And uh, on this side, uh, yes, it's dirty. Now, get ready for this. This is what really sold me on this vehicle. Not particularly this particular vehicle, but this vehicle series in general. Look at this. This is the cockpit of this 3.4 liter flat six engine, 325 horsepower. And this is what you have inside. Uh, yes, it is fairly black. 
it is actually mostly black you've got some aluminum trim but as you can tell the car is a stripper so it does not have a sport chrono package it does not have a PASM it doesn't have a sport exhaust it does not have a 14 or 18 way seats it's got these two way manual seats with no seat memory or anything like that it does not have an upgraded radio it also doesn't have keyless entry so to start the car you actually have to put the the, the key in the ignition and turn it so there are very very few conveniences and I'm going to tell you why I decided to option my used vehicle that way the reason why I searched and purchased a pretty stripper a Cayman S is because of the fact that my channel focuses on DIY stuff and if I were to purchase a GTS or a highly optioned S uh, there will be nothing for me to do. Yes, it will be a car that I owned and, and enjoyed, uh, but in terms of DIY stuff, I, I would bore myself to death. So I wanted something that doesn't have a Sport Chrono package. I actually just purchased all the components to fit it and, and hopefully coat it and all that stuff. So we're gonna have that little uh, clock in the middle. I, uh, I purchased a couple of other stuff, as I mentioned, uh, suspension, exhaust, everything is going to be done to this car for me to show you how to do these things yourself at home, but also for me to enjoy and, and sort of bond with the car as I, uh, as I, uh, as I learn when I disassemble it and, and, and see what's underneath. And even though it's a stripper, it doesn't feel <laughs> basic inside at all. Actually, the center stack does feel very premium. Uh, the shifter, if you could feel that shifter and experience the crispiness of these shifts, uh, you'll be blown away. This beats the shift feel uh, of my M3 completely. It just blows it out of the water. Uh, just, I mean, just this is such a such a mechanical feel. And I hope the microphone picks it up because uh, it's just uh, it's just uh, it's in a league. Uh, of its own and I'm super super happy uh, the seating position is fantastic uh, the way I like to sit I don't like to sit sort of like this I like to pull my steering as close to me as possible uh, so I can sort of assume a racing position these seats even though they're base seats they, they're very comfortable and uh, and I'm just super super happy that I that I got this car that I got this trim and I'm super super happy to take you on my journey of me making this car my own but I know you know we all want to hear the exhaust so I'm leaving my mic here and let's hear what she really sounds like so given the fact that it just snowed and the roads are very wet they're they're clear but they're wet uh, it is cold outside and the car has summer tires on. I probably should not be driving it, but at the same time, I feel like I will be doing you a major disservice if I uh, at least didn't take it for a test drive and, uh, and tell you a bit about my driving impression. So the, the car is almost uh, warmed up so I, can, so I can go. But before I go, I just want to tell you who I purchased the vehicle from. I actually uh, did some digging and the previous owner was this elderly gentleman uh, who really didn't drive this car very, very hard. Uh, the car has only 24,000 miles, uh, but when I uh, got the, uh, the rev range report from the dealer, it had zeros across the range. So it seems like the car has never been redlined or really, really pushed hard. Well, that's gonna change, obviously, uh, but um, I was very pleased to, uh, to to have seen the uh, the the, uh, the report, and that was one of the one of the reasons. <laughs> and to kind of prove that the dealer was telling the truth, in the trunk I found a CD case full of Celine Dion uh, CDs. So it was a gentleman or a lady uh, who listened to uh, some very very nice music. But anyways, uh, let's. Take it out for a quick spin again. I am gonna take it very, very easy. The car is dirty, so uh, I'm not worried about getting it even more dirty, but I just want to uh, have you experience this thing with me. Uh, but ever since I purchased the car, I only put on about 25 miles. I drove it the night that I got it and the morning before it snowed, and that's it. Uh, I have to get used to the parking brake. Uh, it doesn't have manual parking brake. Uh, that's one thing I'm gonna miss. Although, like I said, I still have my uh, M3, so M3 is not going anywhere. And again, I accelerate it 
and there's very little grip. So I have to be super, super careful as I drive. So we're gonna take it very, very easy. But, as you can tell, <laughs> the car gives me a huge smile. Oh, it's not as fast as the M3, obviously. It, uh, miss, it's missing a lot of the technology innovations that the M3 has, but I've gotta say, I, don't, I really don't miss it. Uh, right off the bat, I'm noticing that the seat heaters actually work a lot faster than in the uh, M3. And this car also has cooled seats. I put my foot on the gas and everything spins. Oh my gosh, I really have to be careful. So maybe we should put traction. Now let's keep the traction control off and let's be very, very careful. I know driving with summer tires during the winter is uh, not the best idea, but again, we're going just around the block and uh, the front tires do need to be replaced. You hear that? Ah, uh, revving this engine. Again, not as powerful as my M3, but it feels just super, super mechanical. It's a completely different driving experience. It's, it's hard to describe until you own one of these vehicles. So much fun. I can't wait to take it out on the track. Yeah, the car doesn't have rev matching, so I have to get used to or, or relearn how to rev match. I kind of uh, got lazy with my M3, but one of the modifications that I'll be making to this car is obviously the Sport Chrono, and Sport Chrono will give me uh, rev matching. So, I'm not lying, uh, the rev matching at the track really, really helps. This is what I was looking for. This mechanical feeling. You feel it I, I, again. I, I feel funny saying it because you know, you know, you hear it on TV, you hear it on YouTube. But in in this case, I, I do see it. You feel every input. You feel connected to the car. This manual transmission is so good. It is so good. Yes, it's not as powerful as the M3. I, I knew it going in, but that's why I have the M3. I have the M3, that's my powerhouse, and this is gonna be my sort of fun, zippy go-kart uh, that I'm gonna have fun with on weekends and at the track. Seriously, I, I just have to, I have to find an area where I can open it up to show you how she screams. And she's gonna be screaming a lot louder because we already, like I said earlier, have uh, intakes waiting for us in the trunk. But just, oh, look at these turns. Do you feel it? Oh, this feels so good. So good. You heard that? Yep. That's a good sounding motor, that's for sure. I know we just met, but I love this thing. And on that note, I wanted to thank you very much for watching. This was a sort of a quick uh, unveil. I'm gonna do a, a first wash video and sort of major walk around. Uh, we're going to inspect the car, put it on the lift, see if there's anything wrong with it that I haven't noticed. But I just wanted to introduce you to the vehicle. This is gonna be the addition to the channel. This doesn't mean that the M3 is going away. This doesn't mean that I won't get to work on the M3. M3, uh, for the M3, I do have a lot planned, so stay tuned. Uh, and the M3 is not, going any, is not going anywhere because I put in so much work into this car and I love it so much that I just cannot let it go. But anyways, if you like this video, maybe give me a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't. Uh, and as always, thank you very much for watching and I will be seeing you in the next video. As you can tell, this guy is a happy man. Thanks for watching.